Until the 1860s, the problem with anaesthetics was that they knocked the whole patient out. Sometimes doctors just wanted to knock part of the patient out. The equipment needed to do this effectively was invented in France in the mid-19th century. The issue was, what do you put in the syringe? There was one substance, distilled from the coca plant, that was known to have medicinal properties. In 1860, Albert Nyman purified this strange compound. He called it cocaine. It became the world's first effective local anaesthetic. One doctor was so enthused by cocaine, he used it to conduct an operation on himself. This has to be one of the most extraordinary pictures of all time. Here is a surgeon who has not only put in his own spinal anaesthetic by pushing a needle through his back into his cerebrospinal fluid, he's then administered cocaine into that fluid, removed the needle, gone numb from the waist down, and is now sitting there repairing his own hernia. The two stalwarts on either side were there to give him encouragement, to help him, and occasionally to give him a bit of a shake or slap him around the face, because every now and then he'd pull a bit hard on what he was operating on and he might faint from various reflexes, and so he had to be brought round again uh, before he could continue with the procedure. The doctors who embraced cocaine tested it on themselves with more and more enthusiasm. And that became a problem. Many of the hastily published research papers from the time are incoherent, nonsensical and incomplete. Cocaine turned many of its early proponents into drivelling basket cases, many of whom then died, which didn't help the research process. But the search did begin for a non-addictive form of cocaine. It ended in 1905 with a derivative of cocaine called Novocaine. For decades afterwards, it helped people cope with a regular but unpleasant experience. The realisation that cocoa leaves could be turned into a powerful drug made some researchers look towards another drug made from a plant. They knew all about it from accounts from explorers, but they didn't know which plant it came from. And the people who did were in a different continent. The Amazonian Indians had paralysing arrows loaded with a homemade drug called curare that they used to hunt animals. A 19th century explorer had brought samples of curare back to London and found it had unusual properties. What happens is it circulates round in the bloodstream and uh, blocks the transmission of impulses between nerves and muscles. And so the muscles, not getting that nervous uh, transmission, relax completely. But the only way to find the secret of this thick black substance was to travel to the Amazon jungle and ask the people there how they made it. That project was undertaken by Richard Gill, a medical school dropout with a love of adventure, but progressive paralysis of the muscles. In 1938, Gill decided he would go into the jungle and bring back the secret of Karari. For five months, he lived among the local people seeking out and preparing the plants they used to make the drug. Hill discovered a lot about jungle medicine from his new friends, partly because he was so ill while he was out there. But his mission was accomplished. He returned with 25 pounds of curare and the information that it was made from a plant called Condidendron tomentosum. When Gill brought the plant back to London, none of the drug companies were interested. Gill died in 1958, but by this time curare had become widely accepted by the medical world and was an essential part of 20th century anaesthetics. It had a unique effect. What happens is profound muscle relaxation. So you're not giving so much poison to the patient with all the inhalational agents, and you can run a very light anaesthetic with the patient unconscious. This allows the surgeon en entry into the body cavities. 